Hi everybody, welcome to this week's question and answer video. Um, just to give you a little spiel, I'm a life coach and I try to help people and assist them in their journey of recovering from trauma. Um, I mainly focus on emotional trauma, it's the worst, and uh, it's very, very damaging and, and can be very hard to recover from. And the best way to do this is to talk to people, to socialize, and learn and understand what happened to you. So I hope that I can offer that to you guys a little bit. Um, I'm answering questions from last week's video. I do this every single Monday. And I encourage all of you to please go down below and ask me anything you want. Uh, I'm also asking for your support. I do this for free. And I'm hoping that this information reaches people to at least um, inform them and kind of, you know, push them to get the help that they need. Um, so if you feel like I'm offering a service for you and I can help other people, I really appreciate any kind of support you guys can give me. Um, I think I get about 10% of the people that watch this video thumbs up. So I'd really appreciate voting up or down. Tell me why. There, uh, and even less people subscribe to my channel. And that could really, really help. These kinds of things, I know a lot of people, a lot of you guys are concerned that others might find out what you're doing because um, unfortunately, emotional trauma tends to come from very unhealthy people that are obsessed with you and want to control you and track what you're doing. You can keep all this private on your channel. There's an option to do that. Um, make up a different channel, things like this. But being active, making my videos more active by commenting down there and voting and um, subscribing to the channel, um, suggesting this or sending it, sharing it with other people, putting this in playlists, stuff like this really, really helps. And I really, really appreciate all of you guys' support that you do. Um, thank you very much. I want to thank Sandra for a donation. Thank you, Sandra, very, very much. I really appreciate the gesture. Um, it's one of the kindest gestures you can do for somebody to give them your hard-earned money. So thank you. I don't get donations very often. And so I really appreciate when someone does that. Thank you very much. Um, also, um, I want to tell you guys, a lot of you guys that have been following my channel know that I used to do live videos with Nova. Nova is a therapist in Australia. She's a sweetheart. She's very informed, very good at what she does. And I'm going to start trying to do some more of those with her. Um, I think Thursday. Let's see, Wednesday, Wednesday evening, I'll be doing these. And this is on Facebook. So I'll give you guys a link to my Facebook channel to watch this. And I'm going to try to get the videos onto YouTube. It's much harder than it used to be. I used to be able to record those and put them on my YouTube channel. Anybody that knows how to do that now, uh, I would appreciate if you could tell me. Um, but I'm going to try to do that still. And recommendation. I like to recommend something every week for you guys. Something to help you with, you know, trauma. And... It, it causes all kinds of problems from bad sleep and eating and um, anxiety and depression amongst other disorders. So I'm going to recommend some I think I've recommended before, but it's okay. I found some things on Amazon. They're little things to help with anxiety, calming you, um, social anxiety, something a lot of you guys suffer from. And I, I think this might be kind of neat for some of you. Um, it's fidgets. Things you fidget with in your, in your hand. Something you carry on a keychain. Uh, spinners. Spinners, little things that you can spin with with one hand. And also, I don't know, uh, don't mean to date myself, but I remember when I was a kid, something I liked was the little colored rabbit's foot. Now I'm talking not real ones. Please, nobody freak out. I found artificial ones, fake ones. I, I really don't want a real one. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are concerned about the treatment of the rabbits and stuff like that, but... I, I, when I was a kid, I thought they were pretty gross, really. I mean, I remember you could feel the little nails on the foot. And it was just like, ugh. <laughs> so I found some artificial ones on Amazon. If you guys are interested, go right down in the description box. I got links to it all. Um, it says right here, stress relief, uh, keychains for adults. And I just think they're pretty neat. Uh, I also have little spinners here. Uh, great for party favors, stress and anxiety, relief for kids and adults. And there's all kinds of different ones on Amazon. Maybe this link will just encourage you to go explore. And again, I found the uh, artificial rabbit foot keychain in all kinds of bright, fun colors. Let me know what you guys think. 
if you have some of these or you try them out. Okay, thanks. And another thing I want to recommend is something I do every once in a while called Shane's Law Petition. Shane was a victim of a bad smear campaign. Bad, bad, bad smear campaign. I think I'm going to do another smear campaign video this week. I plan on doing a lot more videos this week. And anybody that, that would like me to do a video, um, uh, ask. Just ask. Ask me what you want to do. It doesn't have to just be questions on here. I, I will devote entire videos to your questions even. Sometimes I do that. But uh, Shane was a victim of a bad smear campaign. And, and smear campaigns are just ugly. And they're, they're becoming more and more common and easier for... Um, abusers to do it with social media. Um, there's not much regulation. You don't get much help. Back then, Shane got zero help. It was intrusive, pervasive in all parts of his life. And unfortunately, Shane took his life because he couldn't find the help he needed. So I found uh, a petition that somebody started in Shane's name. And I'll put the link down below in the description box. I would really appreciate if you could just follow that link to the petition and check yes. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's a great place to start, okay? And uh, yeah, I, it's been growing tremendously. I think I've been recommending this, I think, for like three years. And I've just seen it, uh, not saying it's because of me, but uh, I've seen it just gain massive traction. It's just double, tripled, and it's great. And it really shows how many people are suffering from this. Um, so myself and Shane's family would appreciate that. Thank you. That's it. Let's get started with the questions, everybody. Becca from Indiana. Hi, Becca. You weren't harsh at all, and no, I'm far from ready for a relationship. She's replying about a question I answered for her last week. And all of that made sense, and I appreciate the feedback, really, you guys. If I answer your questions, please let me know what you think, and, and let me know if I misunderstand your questions, if I miss your questions. I don't do that on purpose. Accidents happen. I appreciate your guys' patience and just keep asking me. There's no such thing as a bad question, stupid question, only bad, stupid answers. So I'll try to do my best. So Becca says, my ex never knew about the two hour mark. He just knew towards the end of our relationship when he was cheating on me and I didn't know it yet. I was letting him know about these insecurities. I wore a mask for the first six months. I pretended I wasn't insecure. Another reason I'm far from ready to be in a relationship. I'm only four months clean from my relapse. I always relapse hard at the end of a relationship and these childish behaviors gotta go. I got a good psychiatrist, a therapist, a wonderful drug and alcohol counselor, as well as my medical doc is aware and supportive. Thank you for answering. And I read this because I'm just, I'm proud of you, Becca. I am, um, that you, that you are able to introspect and look at yourself and own your own behaviors and also get support and help to try to become healthier and happier. It's commendable. Um, so many people don't do this. So many, and I think it's great. Um, I wish you so much luck on your journey, Becca, and I'm, I'm always glad to see you here and asking questions and learning more about yourself, and I hope I help you do that. And you've told me before that I have, and I, I appreciate your response. Thank you very much, Becca. <clears throat> Having a good support team like this for Team Becca is wonderful, okay? We all need support, all of us. We are social animals, and life is not easy. And um, when we have bad teachers, bad parents, um, it makes it much, much harder. And we need healthy relationships with people. We really, really do. It's the most important thing in all of our lives, whether you know it or not. And support, you know, we all think of just friends and family. And that kind of support is, is huge, 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 huge. The problem is, is that our friends and family can't help us in, in the absolute help that we need. They just can't. You, you can talk to therapists and they'll tell you they, they, don't, they aren't therapists for their family, their friends. It, our brains don't work that way. It's too personal. It's too emotional. Um, <laughs> I can't coach people I know in my personal life. I can give them suggestions and, and tell them what I tell my clients, but I, I can't take that on myself. And it's too emotional. It's too personal. And we really need to get the help that we need. We really do. And it raises our self-worth. And if we can find people that we trust and we take their advice and do what they tell us to do, it's really giving yourself the best chance possible. So Becca, I, I commend you again. And it's great to watch you grow and learn 
and um, in any way I can assist you, I will. Thank you. All right. And to the B says, one of the best channels on YouTube for mental, emotional wellness. Subscribe. Thank you very much. Welcome to the channel, to the B. I appreciate that. Please ask questions. And all of you, tell us your locations. I, I really push that. I know I do. But it really personalizes people more. I think it brings us together more. It helps people. You know, when we're suffering from trauma, one of the most common, or two of the most common feelings is this kind of helplessness and hopelessness that we are the only one. There's something wrong with us. And to find that it's all over the world, that people are struggling everywhere with these problems, I think can really provide some validation and, and, and a little support in that way. So I appreciate all of you telling us where you are and welcome again to the channel, to the Lee. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. That was nice. Paul, what's going on, David? Going on eight weeks of no contact, feeling better. Awesome. Great. Celebrate this, Paul. Celebrate it. Really, each milestone, each step. I don't care if it's every day. For some people, it's every hour. You know? So I'm glad that you're just interacting on here. I hope that helps you. I'm glad you asked questions. Thank you very much. And, you know, good job. Eight weeks of no contact. And you're feeling better. And that's something we need to remind ourselves all the time. When we have this kind of cognitive dissonance, we tend to, since we don't know how to stay safe and what to do in these stressful relationships, we tend to um, cut off our feelings and lose a sense of who we are. And, and I see this really, really common that we, we aren't associating our behaviors uh, with, with what feels good and bad. Um, we tend to go back to what hurt us, to pain and things like this and kind of lie to ourselves and say, this is what I really want and need instead of understanding like, you know, this hurts. We got to stop it. Got to stop doing this. And there's things that make us feel better. And if that's going no contact, that could kind of tell you, you know, what you need to keep doing. So good job, Paul. Thanks for telling me. All right. Margo. Hey, why did it cut you off in the middle of a sentence? And I, I'm reading this because I uh, just want people to know if anybody else thinks this or wonders this. Sometimes I got to break these videos up in parts. They become very long. And when I start editing um, different long videos together, it, it really uh, damages the quality, the voice and stuff like this. And so I don't have a huge expensive program for this. I, I do all this for free, so I'm not going to invest hundreds and hundreds of dollars into programs to do this. So um, often I'll split these up into two parts. So it just cuts off and it just continues exactly in part two. All right. So thanks for asking, Margo. hope you figured that out. All right, let's get to a question. Jennifer from the United Kingdom. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, thank you for your support as always. You are welcome. When do you think you will be speaking with another coach like you did with that Australian therapist? It was so interesting to see you both interact and it was double the information and support from you. And thank you. Yeah, that's why I said that in the beginning. I should be doing a video with Nova. <coughs> uh... I think Wednesday night, 9.30 Central Time. So that'd be 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Um, if you're in Australia, it, uh, Eastern Australia would be 12.30 PM. Uh, and so I can appreciate all you guys' support. Like I said, I'll put a link down below to my Facebook channel. That way you can get to the video and watch them and see them. And again, I'm going to try to find a way to transfer that video to the YouTube channel, make sure everybody gets to see it. And I will probably, hopefully, maybe reach out to other people soon and, and do more videos with others. Thank you for asking. Thanks for your support. Curly Girl asks, what is CPTSD? And Cindy down here uh, told you, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So this is our reaction and our body's reaction to ongoing stress, the similar kind of stress, typically emotional. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder is a you know, reoccurring uh, stress from our traumas and that continues into life. You know, like somebody makes a tour in war, in battle, and they come out of it and it was so traumatic, it continues to cause them stress in their life until they 
uh, can fix this and, and feel better. Adding the C, the complex, the best way I have to describe that is kind of the ongoing same kind of trauma. Lots of you, lots of you, most of you, I think, who have had these um, very stressful, traumatic, uh, dysfunctional, and healthy, abusive relationships in your adulthood, it may not have started there. If you know me and watch my videos a lot, you'll know that I try to tell you that this comes from childhood and it can be very difficult to identify and therefore I think identifying this can only, only help you. Um, we need to find the problems. You know, it's, it's much easier to fix something once you name it, label it. Not that I like labels, but we have to know what it is. Uh, that's why wrongful or misdiagnosis can be so damaging to people, so damaging to people. A really common one I see the most is um, borderline personality disorder. It very commonly misdiagnosed as bipolar. And they'll give you some drugs and stuff like this. And it's if, if it's wrong, if you have borderline, it can be very damaging because they're two very different disorders extremely. And um, we need to know what our problem is so we can help it and fix it, okay? So um, it's, it could be only good for you if you go to a doctor and, and ask him, and this is somebody that's knowledgeable and is able to diagnose you with PTSD or CPTSD. CPTSD is just a form of post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, I hope I answered that for you, Curly Girl. Please let me know. Thank you. All right, Emily Merton. Hi, Emily. You have no idea how much you are teaching me. I'm hearing these things for the first time. I always <clears throat> rushed into any type of friendship and shared and gave everything about myself so that they will like me. It's such a relief to hear you hear that you only have to befriend people that is good for you and that you really want to. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Emily. Oh, Emily from South Africa. Thank you. You might be the only person that tells us where you are. Um, thanks, Emily. I appreciate that. And... Uh, you know, very, very common. It, our parents are our teachers. They really are. And we're not born, you know, if you think of the most important thing in our life is having our emotional needs met in relationships with people. Most important, really most important. And it's important to know this because a big part of who you are is what you need. And if you don't understand that or even know what emotional needs are and you don't believe those are important to you, um, we really don't have a good sense of self, of, of who we are. So, um, our parents are teachers, and, and, I, and I don't want to hate on any parents, and I don't want to call them good and bad, healthy, unhealthy. Um, it, our teachers can only teach us what they know, okay? So most teachers that didn't teach their children everything they need to know is typically because the teacher doesn't know it. And so we need to learn this, and um, there's such a process in healing from this, and one major step major is to finally learn what you need to know to have these healthy relationships. So many people, so many of you guys think that this is only about feeling better, just about some past relationship. I need to get over it and feel better. And yes, we do. We need to not get over it, get through it. But yes, we need to feel better. But we need to learn why this happened and how to fix it so it doesn't happen again. Um, and because if we don't, we, we either isolate and don't have relationships with people, which is extremely stressful, extremely stressful. We can't live like that. We just can't. Or we keep jumping into new relationships with people and repeating these same and same mistakes, meaning that you keep finding these toxic people and having toxic, stressful relationships. So the key is to know how to have a healthy, loving, functional relationship with people, how to form them and maintain them and have them grow, okay? So it's just, it, it's detrimental to not, to not finally learn these things, what our parents couldn't teach us, okay? Um, thanks, Emily. All right. And Melinda, or I'm sorry, Hazel. Uh, Hazel says, Hazel's responding to somebody else's comment, but I wanted to read this. That story was very well explained, and I particularly like the part about not giving any more of yourself to toxic people. I guess by not caring, they lost the right to know how you feel anymore. I always feel I have to be open with everyone. 
this was good. Thank you, Hazel. I know you're commenting about the story I told. Um, if you guys are interested, watch the last week's question and answer videos. It's really, really common that uh, our parents conditioned us and programmed us to be very vulnerable all the time for them. And this is what makes us be very vulnerable to people right away all the time. And this is called boundaries, okay? If, if we have difficulties trying to explain to our partners or our family or our friends how we feel because they don't ask and they don't listen, right? It's extremely stressful, but they may not care. They may not want to know how you feel. This is another huge part of who we are. And some, a lot of people who typically don't know who they are, like narcissists, won't care who you are. Narcissists will project what they are, and they'll care only about what you are, not who you are. And it's extremely important to not rush into relationships, to, to, to be safe and have security. And that's by not completely being vulnerable to people and telling them everything all at once. I've met people before in the first days. They're telling me every single thing about their life and every pain and trauma they've ever had and every relationship they have and how they feel all the time and all their problems. We don't have to do that, and it's not safe. We're gonna get hurt. And these are always the same people that, that tell me how they get hurt in every relationship. So take it slow. Take it real slow, okay? Not everybody's the same. Really, really important to know, even though we're equal, all of us, but we're all so different, okay? Not everybody is like you, and not everybody has the same wants and the same needs, and definitely not the same values. And if we don't share the same values with people we have relationships with, it'll never work. Never work. Really, you know, like if I value honesty, which I do, I can't have any kind of relationships with people that don't value honesty. And I don't care what they say. It takes time to get to know who they are and to see that they do value honesty, to see that they are honest, not just say it. And so I can't have any kind of relationship with somebody that, that doesn't value honesty or integrity or respect for others or self-respect or loyalty. This is me. This is what I value. And not everybody does. 